What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can create your own AI generated images based on a simple text prompt using stable diffusion. So let us get right into it. All right, so in this video today, we're not going to write any code. We're not going to implement our own solutions. We're not going to train our own AI models. We're going to make use of an existing project called Stable Diffusion. We're going to use an existing model and we're going to generate AI images based on text prompts and maybe based on input images. Those are the two main functionalities of Stable Diffusion. We can go to the GitHub repository. You will find all the links that you need in the description down below. Uh, and when we scroll down here, you can see some sample images here that are the result of a simple text to image uh, generation where you provide a text prompt, for example, I don't know what the prompt for those images was, but maybe something like two cats on a, uh, what is this a radio or something like that, and then it generates images like those. Uh, or you can also provide an input image as a guideline together with a text prompt like down below. So this is the input image, a simple sketch of a landscape and then you provide here a fantasy landscape uh, and so on as a description as a prompt and those are the two images here that result uh, that are the result of this combination so this is what we can do with stable diffusion and this video today is purely a setup guide uh, an installation guide you could say because i'm not going to explain any of the uh, inner workings of stable diffusion, how it works or any of that. I'm not going to go into the theory. I'm just going to show you how to get this running on your system, provided that you have the necessary hardware. So this is just a practical guide on how to get this on your system, how you can uh, use this to generate AI images. And I want to show you some impressive results here. That is the main purpose of this video. So the first thing we need to do is we need to go to the official stable diffusion repository compass slash stable diffusion. As I already mentioned, the links are going to be in the description down below. And we want to download all the files. So we can just click here on code, we can just download as a zip file, you can of course also clone it uh, using git. Um, I'm going to save all of this here on my desktop. So this is going to take some time. Uh, while this is downloading, what we're going to do here is we're going to use this main repository to do the basic installation. But later on, at least uh, this is what I had to do on my system to get better results. Uh, later on, we're going to use this repository here, which is an optimized repository from uh, I don't know what the name is exactly, but I think Bazu Jindal or something like that. This guy has the same um, repository here. So basically a fork from the official repository, but it has this specific folder optimized SD, which basically means that we don't need as much VRAM in our GPU. So you will probably need an NVIDIA GPU. Um, and the more VRAM you have, the more capable you go or the more, uh, the more features you will be able to use the higher the resolution that you can use. Uh, but this optimized version is just, uh, yeah, runs on lower GPU VRAM, as it already says here in the description. So we're going to install this one here from the official repository. And then we're going to swap the uh, what was it the scripts folder, we're going to exchange it for the optimized SD folder. And then we basically have a version that runs more efficiently on uh, less VRAM. So that's that. Now I don't know how much time this will take to download. So I'm just going to skip to the part where we already have this on our system. All right, so the two downloads are now finished. I also downloaded the second repository here so that we already have it on our system. And now we can just open the directory, right click, I'm going to use seven zip to extract all of this into a directory. And now what we need to do is we just need to follow the installation instructions of the main repository. Uh, we're going to go here to the requirements section. And here it says we need to create a, uh, a conda environment. So an anaconda environment. If you don't have anaconda installed, you're going to have to install it. It's quite simple. But I also have a tutorial on this channel where I explain how to do it. I think it's part of my uh, data science series. So it's a very old video, but you can check it out if you need some help with installing anaconda. Uh, so I'm just going to open up my command line here, I'm going to navigate to the desktop. I'm going to navigate to stable diffusion. Uh, and in here, I'm going to now say conda, which is an anaconda command, and for environment, create dash f environment dot yaml, which is the file that defines the environment. So we're just going to run this, it's probably going to have to do some installations here. 
So this is going to take some time, I guess. Uh, after this, we have to activate the environment LDM, which is the name that uh, this environment has based on the YAML file. Um, and every time we want to do something with stable diffusion, we will need to have this environment activated because it's going to use the package, it's going to use this environment here as a basis. All right, so once all of these dependencies are installed, we can run conda activate LDM, and then we are inside of the environment that we need to be in. So what we're now going to do is we're going to add the optimized SD folder. So we're going to open up the second zip file. We're going to navigate to, or we're going to open up our directory here. We're going to go into this one and we're going to copy or we're going to extract here the optimized SD folder. I'm going to close this now. I'm going to close this now. And essentially, uh, what we now need is the model that is actually going to do the generation. So we're going to go back into the initial repository here, we're going to scroll down uh, to this section, uh, section here, stable diffusion v1. And we want to click here on this link, which is the weights are available via the compvis organization at hugging face. So we click on this link to navigate to hugging face. And here we have a bunch of models to choose from. The one that we're going to download here is Stable Diffusion V1 for Original. This is the one that is compatible with what we're trying to do. We're going to click on this one here and we want to download this file here. So sd-v1-4.ckpt. I'm going to download this uh, and we're going to place this into Stable Diffusion. Uh, what was it? I think models. Was it models? Yes, LDM, and then into a new directory called stable dash diffusion dash v1. Inside of this directory here, we're going to save it, but we're going to save it as model dot ckpt. So we're going to just save it. Uh, and this will take some time, I think it has uh, what was it four gigabytes or something of size. So this is going to take some time. So we're going to skip that part here as well. All right, so now the download has finished, which means that we're done with the setup process, we're done with the installation process. Now it's all about figuring out how to actually use stable diffusion, how to actually generate the images. And this is explained in quite simple terms here in the optimized repository, we can just scroll down here. Um, and we can see exactly what commands to use to generate from image to image or from text to image. And there is also a graphical user interface that we're going to take a look at here in a second. But let's start with a command line uh, usage, we're going to just go into the command line again, we're going to navigate to the desktop, or actually, we don't need to navigate to the desktop, because we are already in the correct uh, directory here. And what we want to run is essentially the command that we have here, Python, uh, or Python three, depending on your system. Uh, Python optimized SD and then either image to image or text to image the respective script, then a prompt and then some settings here. And there are many settings that we can choose here. And this is actually why I prefer to have the graphical user interface. Usually I'm a command line guy, and I prefer to have commands instead of buttons and, and sliders and stuff like that. But in this case, it gives you just a better overview to have a graphical user interface, we're going to take a look at this here in a second. But let's just copy this command here. And let's just paste it here. And let's change the prompt from cyberpunk style Tesla to something else. Let's change it to uh, I don't know, purple cat playing tennis against Super Mario. And let's go ahead and say that we want to have smaller images here. So that it's a little bit faster. Let's do one iteration and just one simple sample because I want to move on to the graphical user interface here. Let's just run this and see if this works. And if it works, we should see some progress bars here in a second, loading model, found the model, and it seems to actually work. Now, depending on your GPU, depending on your VRAM, depending on your system as a whole, this is going to be faster or slower, obviously. Um, I think usually it's uh, faster. But now maybe because it's the first time I'm running a command, it takes some uh, some more time, but you're going to see here that it doesn't take too long to generate the images. Or actually, I think that the problem is that I'm recording. So I'm not sure if my video is going to lag. I think the recording is just fine, but it's going to uh, it's massively slowing down this process. So usually it's way faster, usually it takes like for one image of that size, it usually takes I don't know, uh, 
five to 10 seconds on my system, but now since I'm recording, it takes longer. Uh, but still, we should see a result. The result is then going to be stored here in the outputs directory. So we're going to be able to see it here in outputs and then uh, text to image samples once it's done. And then for each prompt that you have, you're going to have a separate directory. So if I go here into text to image samples, you're going to see here purple cat playing tennis against Super Mario. Uh, okay, this is garbage. <laughs> this didn't work well. But uh, instead of just showing you here now how to do it better in the in the command line, I'm going to show you the graphical user interface because there we can also uh, use some more samples and we're going to get some good results. So this is not what you get usually. This is just a bad example. I'm going to show you that we're going to end up with some uh, pretty impressive results here. But in order to run the graphical user interface, we need to install a uh, package. We need to install the package called Gradio. So pip install Gradio is what we need here. And with this, we can then run the text to image in the image to image um, as a graphical user interface. So there's separate scripts for that. This is going to run on localhost. But once we have this installed, what we can do, I think it's also listed here, we can call then just Python optimized as the image to image Gradio or text to image Gradio, uh, which is going to allow us to do that. So we're going to just copy this command here to open the text to image version. And this is going to run, uh, as I said, on localhost. So once this is done, it's going to uh, provide us with a port number, I think it's uh, 7860. As far as I remember. So let's see how long this takes. There you go. So this is the IP address. And this is the graphical user interface. So what we do here is we provide a simple prompt. So for example, let's go ahead again with purple cat playing tennis against Super Mario. And we're going to now say uh, that we want this, uh, this resolution here. And here we have different samplers. This is quite interesting. First of all, I'm going to enable the turbo uh, option to just make everything faster. And depending on the sampler you use, you get a different style of image. Now, I'm not entirely sure what style the different samplers are giving you. I, I cannot really uh, formulate it in sentences here, but you will notice, for example, a difference between using PLMS and uh, Euler on the same prompts. So if you generate 100 images using this one, you're going to get a different style than using uh, this one. So you can play around with that, but we're going to now just say that we want to have uh, four images and one iteration Four batch size four basically means that we're going to get four images at once. And iterations means that we're going to do this n times. So if I say two iterations, batch size four, it's going to give me eight images, first four, and then the second four. Uh, if I say eight, one, it's going to give me eight images at once, I can also say one eight to get one by one the images. Of course, higher batch size takes longer until you get a result and iterations, you always get the results in between. So let's just run this here and see what happens. If I submit this in the command line, you should be able to see the process. Maybe this is going to be faster now due to the turbo uh, check box that I that I checked. Uh, but I'm going to speed this up. So All right, so now it's done. And we can see that the results are actually quite funny. So we don't really get a purple cat in this image, maybe, but this is actually Mario as a purple cat. It's not a purple cat playing tennis against Mario. But you can see that at least to some degree, it produces what we're looking for. Now, this might not be the best example, I'm going to show you some examples that I already did with this setup. So not with another model, not with other resources with this exact setup. Uh, I have some examples of different prompts and the resulting images that are quite impressive. I'm going to show you those. But I want to generate something interesting here. So maybe let's go with a different prompt. Let's say um, something like a fantasy portal, or maybe let's say a blue fantasy portal leading to a mysterious world full of clouds. And I don't know, demons, maybe. So 
this is quite specific and it should be able to deliver that. So we're going to run this one more time. I'm then going to show you also the image to image version, uh, how to provide a sample image, how to generate a new image based on an input image. Uh, and then I'm going to also show you the examples uh, that I already have. All right, so here you can see the results. This is actually a game card. This one is quite cool. So here we have actually what I was asking for, at least to some degree. We see a blue fantasy portal leading to a mysterious world full of clouds. I don't see any demons here, but yeah. Uh, here we have a blue portal. Here we have demons maybe, yeah. So that's actually quite impressive already. Think about this. This is an AI. It doesn't understand any of these words. It doesn't know what blue is. It doesn't know what fantasy is. It doesn't know what portal is. It just takes this text input and generates those images, which is quite impressive if you think about the fact that I could write anything. Now, we saw a purple cat might not be uh, a purple cat playing tennis against Mario seems to be more difficult than this, but this is still very impressive. So let's go ahead and provide a sample image. So let's um, use the other one. Let's use the image to image version. Uh, and here we're going to just write a simple guide or we're not write a simple guide. We're going to draw a simple guideline. So I'm going to run this here. <clears throat> I'm then going to open up paint and I'm going to say that I want to have 512 times 512 pixels as an input here. <clears throat> and I'm going to just provide some simple stuff. I don't know. Maybe we're going to have some, some grass here. We're going to then maybe have a blue sky and then maybe some mountains like this here. Uh, and maybe I want to say that there's some lava. So maybe I want to say here, this is actually a volcano. I'm going to just fill this here with orange. And maybe I want to have some, some mountains here that don't have any lava. There you go. So one prompt that I could use here is maybe Austrian Alps with volcano. So the Austrian Alps don't have volcanoes, but I could just say that this should be uh, maybe I can add a cow or something just some basic animal here. I hope this is not too confusing for the model shouldn't be. Let's just close this here. Let's just add the colors maybe some white circles, or I don't know how to draw a cow, uh, a cow. But let's just do it like this. So very abstract, not a really beautiful drawing. And chances are this is not going to turn into something good. So oftentimes what it does is, is it just takes this image and produces a very similar version of it, not really beautiful. But we can try and if this doesn't work out so well, I have some examples of something that did work out. Uh, kind of interesting in the past already. So let's just say input PNG here. And let's go. Let's open this up in the browser. Here I can now drop the image so I can just go into this directory, I can load the input PNG. And I can say, uh, Austrian Alps with cow and volcano or maybe active volcano in the background something like that. Um, and then maybe I can say here batch size four again, iterations one, and we can just go with turbo again, submit and let's see what happens. I think this should is this faster or slower than text to image? I'm not sure. Let's see. Decoding the image. That's the first part that's not too doesn't doesn't seem to take too long. But still, I'm going to speed up the process here. All right, so we have some results. This is actually kind of cool, but I don't see a volcano. So we see some mountains, it took what I gave it the basic structure, a cow, some grass and mountains, it interpreted this as a tree instead of uh, a volcano. This one seems way more accurate. So we have a cow, we have some grass, we have some mountains, and we have something that looks like fire. Um, here again, I don't see fire here again, I don't see fire. But yeah, this is quite impressive. Still, you can see the basic pattern was provided with a simple abstract graphic. And then it turned this into something that I mean, this one looks like a pretty 
pretty good cow, I would say. And this looks like somewhat of a volcano slash fiery mountain or something like that. Uh, but this is how you do that. You can play around with that. You can generate some images. You can generate hundreds of images. You can play around with different prompts, with different uh, settings here. This is actually quite fun. And once you have this running on your system, I'm sure you're going to spend hours just playing around with it. All right, so as you can imagine, I already played around with this tool quite a bit and I have some examples that I wanna to show to you guys. Some of them are quite impressive so that you get an idea here what this model is capable of. The first one that I have here is Alexander the Great Sunset. This is the prompt and the result is this. So basically some images of something that looks at least kind of like Alexander the Great, maybe without a proper hand. Uh, but that's quite interesting. Then we have again some Alps and some cows. Uh, the reason I included this one is I wanted to show you that when you look at this here in the first moment, this might seem like a solid image, but then you zoom into it and you see uh, one cow merging with another cow, then they don't have faces, they don't have proper heads, we have some random pixels that should be cows or maybe uh, houses or something like that, but uh, this is, when you look at the details, it is, it is not as good uh, as when you look at it um, initially. What else do we have? Uh, Barcelona Beach with lots of people. Same thing, uh, looks like a solid image, then you zoom in and people don't have proper bodies or heads. Um, then we have Barcelona Street Sunset. We get some good images, but when you look at the details, I mean, this one's actually quite solid, uh, if you ignore that this guy doesn't have a head. Uh, but the buildings look fine, I guess. Um, but this one here, for example, looks like a part of a church that shouldn't be uh, its own building. It's it's the top of a church and not just a simple tower. Uh, what else do we have? BMW with LED light. This one is quite solid, I think. This one is also quite solid. Uh, this one, yeah, not so interesting. Uh, and then the most interesting one, I think, is fruit salad, because this looks actually like some solid fruit salad. So this one, I don't know, maybe... Maybe those points shouldn't be here, but other than that, this looks like a solid food, uh, fruit salad. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily think that those are AI generated when I see them. So this is quite good. Then I also played around with liminal place and surreal place. So this is quite interesting because it catches the feeling of what is liminal, what is uh, surreal. You can see that these images look a certain way. Maybe I can zoom in they look a certain way, they're all AI generated. So this is quite interesting, I think, here as well. This one is also quite good. Yeah. Oh, this is my favorite, actually. So this one also looks like the, the thing that I... Uh, this, this is something I think about when I think about liminal uh, places. Then Surreal Place, also quite impressive. So... At least this one here, this looks like art. If a human draws this or, or visualizes this, I think this would be classified as art. Yeah, so this is quite impressive. Um, then I also have, this is also quite interesting to see, I have futuristic city with flying cars. The reason this one is interesting is, first of all, the results are quite good, as you can see here. But the one thing that I want to show you here in particular is that the training set of these images, um, you can see what kind of images were included in training this model, because when you go to, where was it? This one here, you can clearly see that those are the typical stock photo or a copyright watermark, uh, yeah, watermarks, basically, where you have a stock photo that you have to pay for, but you can see it with... Uh, with these things here. And it thinks that those are part of the image, so it included it here. This is quite interesting to see, which means that the model was actually also trained on stock photos that were not paid for. Uh, but yeah, the results are quite impressive here as well. Uh, what else do we have? We have Portal to Fantasy World. Yeah, we get pretty similar things here. And then finally, what I wanted to show you here also for the text to image is Stairway to Heaven. Those two are not too impressive, but this one actually looks, again, like art. Um, the only interesting example that I have here for image to text is the following. I have this template here, very basic drawing, nothing too fancy, just some orange sky, some grass, some, some path here, uh, and a basic tower with an eye and some fire uh, on, uh, on top. 
Uh, and I think the prompt was, what was it? Fantasy world with dark mage tower. And actually, I think the results are quite impressive. So let me just open this up here again. Let's go into the directory again. Uh, wrong directory. There you go. You can see that this actually is, especially this one here, looks not too bad when you consider the input image. So when you compare it to, this is quite impressive that it takes this image in the prompt and turns it into that um, or into this. This is also quite interesting, I think. So yeah, uh, those are just some examples. You can play around with this for hours, for days maybe even. Uh, let me know what your best prompt is in the comment section down below. And this is how you install, how you set up and how you use Stable Diffusion. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.